All right, part two of this video here is, uh, I guess I left off on my solar uh, solar tracking uh, unit here. I left off uh, with uh, some flimsy uh, mainframe here, so you'll see I've added in some more support here. Uh, I think, what do I have there now? Six of them, um, spaced about 10 inches apart roughly. Um, got my uh, main uh, main support in and uh, bolts done up and whatnot. Got my actuator uh, actuator uh, mount here. This is just a temporary, just so I could paint it and manhandle it without having to damage the actuator. It's just a just to hold it in the 90 degrees. And I don't remember if I uh, showed anything on this adjustment system here. Uh, I still have to get a stopper on here so that this doesn't fly right off the end. And uh, of course a coat of paint on this side here. And uh, I've got these mounting brackets built up here. Um, mounting is depending on uh, how, you, how and what you have to do. This is uh, 025 wall. It's heavy duty. I think it's 025. It might even be more than that. Um, this is an actual receiver uh, for a uh, pickup truck hitch. And what I've done is uh, it just slides on, or this slides into it, I guess. Got a locking pin here. This is just temporary for now. And uh, another clamp system here. Uh, well, I'm spanning a 5-inch uh, clothesline post. It's pretty heavy-duty stuff, and it's concreted in the ground, so it's a good a good base to work with. Um, we're still in winter time here, so I'm not going to be drilling and drilling a hole and uh, slapping any piles in anytime soon here. So what this here does is this pivots so that uh, I can clamp this to the pole, drop this pocket down, slide in my... Uh, my tracking uh, hard or tracking uh, framework, and do up the pin, stand it up, do up the upper clamp, uh, tune it into uh, solar noon, and uh, put my uh, my actuator back on and that sort of thing. Mount my panels, and we're good to go. So that's just kind of where we're at here now. Um, we're gonna get uh, putting the uh, the uh, Chinese solar tracking electronics on here pretty quick here and uh, we'll get those mounted on if we have to do any welding or whatnot on them we'll get her down here in the shop and uh, from there we'll probably put a junction block on finish the painting and uh, we'll get her ready to uh, get put into place and installed all right well the mail came today and I was expecting um, parts for my windmill which were only three days away and this is 20 days away this is my solar tracker pretty small box but uh, well packaged I'll soon let you know what I think of the inside well, <laughs> the uh, package this thing to get run over by a bus uh, just wanted to point that out. There's uh, not much that was going to happen to that unless it got squashed. But anyway. Okay, here is our uh, solar array on our solar tracking system, single axis. Uh, you'll notice she's uh, as far east as she can go. Waiting for that uh, to pick up on the window there, um, the uh, solar window. So. It's, uh, it's all come together here. I don't know, I've never had one before, so I'm just kinda playing it by ear here. So uh, if you watched my other video on how I built the frame there, you see how all that came together. Um, and I built this uh, clamping system to come onto this old clothesline post. I had to cut one, ar one uh, arm off the clothesline post and it actually, pivots right here that's actually a hinge I built that's a receiver off of a for a, a pickup truck receiver for your hitch 
and so you just slide that uh, rusted one inside the other one, drop the pin in, and then you stand her up and do up the top clamp, and then you can rotate it on this pipe in the ground here, and that'll tune in our solar noon. And uh, we've got our variable, I can't remember what that's called, azimuth or whatever the heck it, it's called. Uh, I'll call it my pitch control, and then you can see how the uh, how the linear actuator runs along there. So now I wanted to do a a review on this this solar track or electronics. And um, yesterday when I hooked it up, well, if you see the lights on here, it's still trying to go back to the east, but the linear actuator stops it from doing that. So that means it's still picking up that the east, the sun is stronger in the east, but it, I think it seems to realize limits. So anyway, the, the solar tracker electronics are extremely simple and compact. Um, I am honestly, I'm happy with them, I really am. They've, they've uh, done something very simplistic and uh, not only that, but I can't compare it to a $2,000 solar tracking electronics, but this does exactly what they say it'll do, so far anyway, and uh, it cost me $89. So, uh, like this, this grommet stuff, I put this on, this is all my work, but uh, in the front there, there's a sensor. I'll maybe show it to you later when the thing rolls around here. It's a little easier to see. I've got it in a tight corner here. Um, this little electronic box, you can see what the see what it's doing with the lights on it. It's see-through. Uh, I still have to get it mounted, but I want to paint this post first. Um, it comes with a nice connector here for the linear actuator. I should probably get that weatherproofed as well. Um, and you can actually flip your, your polarity around on your linear actuator because it doesn't really matter which is positive, which is negative. Either it goes the right way or the wrong way, so you just switch them around. Um, but all in all, yesterday I fired it up. It was pointing virtually straight ahead, so where I'm pointing now. It tracked all day, tracked all day across the sky and the sunset where that evergreen is, that taller one right in front of us. But as it was setting, there was a bunch of clouds way up here that uh, were catching the light pretty good. So it went back and it found them. So I went into the garage and it was still pulling two amps off those clouds after the sun was setting. Then it caught the sun right at the sunset. You could just see it through the trees there. So she cranked around back to the west again. She did that. And then once that sun went down, she tracked all the way back to the east and then she tracked right back to where it started originally that day and I'm thinking what the heck I couldn't figure it out at first and it must have a memory of where it starts so this morning when the Sun came up over there I was up and I watched it track as far east as it could and you can see with this light on that means it's still trying to track to the east but I think tomorrow it'll know it can't go any farther so once that sun comes up and around, it will chase it around. Um, I did notice it, it's not always pointing the panels perfectly at the sun. And I think the reason for that is the way this thing pivots on that angled axis. The, the sensors are getting perfect amounts of light, but it doesn't necessarily mean it. At solar noon, it's dead on the money and throughout the high part of the sun. But as it gets later and earlier, You'll notice it doesn't track the sun 100%. So I'm losing maybe an amp on my panels. But you know what? I'm tracking 16 amps all day instead of 18 amps for two hours a day. So I don't know, I haven't calculated it, but it's definitely in the, it's definitely way better. And I am entirely happy. You have to keep in mind I only paid $89 for this. Um, shipping was way faster than they said. Uh, it was supposed to take 20 days. I think I got it in about 10. So, I'm quite happy. I really am. 
Uh, it's got wind sensors on it. Everything's adjustable, so you can save your battery and stuff. Um, so I have to tweak with that probably a little bit yet. But uh, overall, it does exactly what they say. Now, what I've got here, you'll see this other wire running here. I've got this weatherproof uh, box here. Inside, there's a charge controller. And it just goes up to two of these cheap little solar panels. And uh, what they do is they actually go in the greenhouse and they just run to a battery. And the battery is out of the elements. It charges the battery, keeps the battery topped up, and that battery runs this system. Now you'll see this blue extension cord coming down. That's still uh, that's today's project here. Um, and it, that's what's feeding my shop with DC power. So I kind of had to throw an extension on it. So, uh, and it's frozen to the ground right now. So it's gonna have to stay like that here for a little while. But other than that, I'm gonna give her a thumbs up. And uh, anyone who's thinking of, of uh, this type of system, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, um, I wouldn't hesitate on it. It's, uh, it's only, it's only 90 bucks or 89 bucks or whatever the heck it was. So I mean, deal with it. It's, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to save you a lot of grief because the one I was building, the, the two switches alone, uh, double pull, double throws are over a hundred dollars. So anyway, that's my opinion on it. Uh, if you do it, I hope you, hope you, uh, have good luck with it and the one thing I do want to mention is this post has been in the ground for 30 years this clothesline post it's concreted in as far as I know about three feet down it is solid and let me tell you standing this thing up was crazy it was all I had um, and I wanted to put four panels on here which I still might if I had room but uh, I'll have to see how that wind sensor works, but that's food for thought. If you are going to build something like this, it'd uh, be nicer if I could have kept it closer to the ground, but uh, the location uh, did not permit that. So, anyways, out for now.